actually like Christmas. I love the music, the lights, the decorations. I love going to my friend's house. He has a beautiful Christmas tree. But I do not have Christmas tree envy. I don't. Who wants to schlep a tree from the woods or even a store and, like, tie it to the roof of your car and bring it into the house with the schmutz? I don't need that. I don't care how beautiful a tree looks. But here's the main reason why I'm so happy that Christmas trees aren't part of our traditions and our holidays. If it were, there would be a thousand rules and regulations regarding the tree. There would be a tractate of Talmud, Masechet Ha'etz. And it would just be chapters and chapters of rabbis arguing about how you shecht the tree, where to shecht it, when to shecht it, if it has a blemish, can you even shecht it at all? What kind of tree must it be? Well, it cannot bear fruit because that would be destroying future food, but it must emit sap. You have to see a droplet of sap, a kazayat of sap, because to show it's a living tree, you can't cut down a tree that's already dead. You've got to kill it yourself in the most humane way possible. Can a goy cut down the tree for you? Is it mavushal, non-mavushal? Big machloket, big disagreement. When you're bringing the tree, thank you, there's more. When you're bringing the tree into the house, do you make the bracha before you enter the doorway? Hillel says, once your left foot is inside the foyer, it's too late. Shammai says, no, as long as both feet aren't in the house, and they both agree it may be too late to make the bracha on entering, but it's never too late to make the bracha on mounting, when you mount the tree. And when you're standing the tree up, you should have in mind all the fallen trees that were killed to make paper and furniture. And when decorating the tree, and this is crucial, you must string the lights right to left, but light them left to right. And if, God forbid, if one of the bulbs is out, the whole string's no good. Each bulb represents Kal Yisrael. And if one of our lights are out, we're all out. Some say as long as it's dim, if the light bulb is dim, if you read the Rashi, he says the word dim includes a flicker. If it's a flickering, then there's still some life in the light. It's a flicker. And once the tree is lit, you cannot derive any benefit from the light of the tree. If you want to read, you have to put a lamp next to it. If the lamp goes out, throw the book away, run out of the room. Don't derive any benefit from the smell either. Be with your nose closed and breathe through your mouth. And chas v'shalom said a stem break off. The whole tree is garbage. But you can't just throw it out. you got to chop it down, save it for next year's chach on Sukkot. Thank you so much, Stan, with us. I gotta go.